Thanks to COVID-19, your university, like mine, is probably now making everything go fully online. That's probably best for the community's health, best for our students' health, but, well, pretty obnoxious and annoying if you're not used to teaching online. I actually just started teaching an online course this, this semester. Uh, I wanted to share some of the things that I've hacked together in that process uh, because it struck me that they might be useful to other folks who want to get up and running recording lectures and, and whatnot. Uh, here's what I'm not going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about uh, anything having to do with uh, online pedagogy. There are plenty of people out there, plenty of resources out there that do a great job on that, way more than I could do, and I'm still learning how to use this medium myself. I'm not going to talk very much about technology. Uh, there are plenty of great solutions out there if you're willing to spend the time and effort to figure them out. Um, one thing that I've tried and worked okay was doing lecture capture on my uh, iPad. So I take up like a PowerPoint and write on it while doing a screen capture. Although that just, I find, does not complement my style of teaching any more than actually using PowerPoint in the classroom does. If you're good at that, well, hey, great for you. Doesn't work for me. So I'm not going to talk about any of that, and I'm not going to talk about any of the details of editing. In fact, what I'm going to talk about is how to do as little editing as possible, because editing is the worst thing in the world, as little with this video as possible. So without the way, I'll spice in right about here some thoughts about uh, how I've actually set this up. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I've found that help while you're actually filming and uh, setting all, everything up that helps you minimize the amount of time you have to spend editing. So um, probably not going in order, but the first thing is making a ton of um, lots of, of short videos. The shorter they are, the easier it is to edit them and you can assemble several of them into a, a longer video if you want. But I've actually found looking at my the analytics on the YouTube channel where I publish everything, uh, that it seems like students will watch, you know, if I have, say, uh, four three-minute videos, um, they'll watch almost all of those if they're only three minutes long. But if I publish one 12-minute video, like most, it seems like most viewers don't even watch 50% of it. So it might actually be pedagogically more useful. Not sure, but it definitely makes it easier to edit if you condense things down into shorter, uh, short, shorter sections. When you're filming, if you find yourself like me, stumbling over words, messing things up, having to start and restart again, it is an incredible pain, especially if you're not doing a sort of face on shot to figure out where to actually, you know, make the cuts when you're editing. So I've evolved a little convention for myself that when I screw up and I need to go back and start over a, a sentence or whatever again, I'll do something like this, cross my hands so I know, okay, when I'm editing, that's where I start. And then I'll put my hands down and just like one, you know, one beat afterwards, I'll start talking. So I'll be like, uh, I, was, I screwed this up. I hate being online. Everything sucks. So what I'm talking about is, you know, so something like that I find really helps edit because otherwise without that visual marker, it's a gigantic pain. Um, subtitles and captioning. Obviously, so it's important to have subtitles and captioning. It really helps everybody uh, learn and understand better, uh, not just those who need it because of a medical, uh, medical situation. It's, again, obviously easiest and best if you can use a professional transcriber, but when we're now throwing everything together on the fly, um, the thing that I found that seems to work okay when I'm making like a video where I find my students aren't understanding something, I need to give them another lecture, it's on the fly, is to use the YouTube transcription, like the automatic transcription of the video, so it will automatically put closed captions in, and then, but you have to go in and edit them uh, line by line in the YouTube, you know, sort of through the web interface. And I find this to be a version therapy for vocal tics, basically, because, oh my God, I did not realize how many times I say, um, or right, or so, or anyway, um, ugh, God, I hate that. But 
it's not terribly hard. The process is reasonably easy. Um, and it you get basically decent uh, subtitling. One thing that I have found, um, if you're doing it that way, is to like sort of not, you know, sort of like over edit things. Because sometimes you get, I, I find I'll get really pulled towards trying to make the words that I said grammatical or more clear. But if you're watching the video with the, the captioning on and the words that are at the bottom of the screen are not what's coming out of the person's mouth and into your ears, it's actually, it's actually really jarring. So you want to try to stay as close to what you actually said while still getting rid of all the usual crap that comes out of, well, at least my mouth.